This is Reality Jukebox. Welcome back to part two of our podcast on live music. In this episode, we're going to take a look at some rather famous hospitality riders. Let's get to it. Yes, you can kick off as well. You kick yeah, off. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, well, this is what I've learned from you. Pharrell Williams uh, and his um, his kind of, I guess, kind of rock and roll lifestyle. He had him and his entourage of you know, 26 people to be entertained in his dressing room um, with belly dancers while they drank uh, through 20 crates of Grey Goose vodka, 15 magnums of Perrier Jute. Champagne. Yeah, cham- very fancy champagne and 20, 20 crates, crates of, of Bacardi rum. rum. Yeah. Um, a fair play to him. He's obviously having a great time, you know, with the boys. He's gone off on tour. I can only imagine the state of him by the time he rolled out onto stage after that, to be fair, because, uh, you know, he must have been putting away some serious alcohol there. Um, and it must, you know, I, he's like, I can just imagine him. Obviously, he's professional, but... The interesting thing about that is he may not have been there. Really? Yeah, I remember I was talking about the ACDC gig mm-hmm. before. They didn't hang around. Mm-hmm. They went back to the the, the hotels and the hotels they were staying in, yep. you know, locally, yep. which was in Kensington and um, you know Brompton Road or whatever where they were mm-hmm. staying or whatever. They didn't really hang around. One of them might have hung, but if I remember right, I don't think any of them hung around. The only one that hung around was um, the singer with his pub, yep. you know, at the back. Oh, of course, yeah. But we'll, we'll, we'll go more yeah. into it. But he may not have been there. Potentially, wasn't there. I mean, fair, yeah, to be fair, I suppose, yeah. But he may well have been. But yeah, also, <laughs> if he was there, then what a party. And you can just imagine getting your alcohol sweats on stage mid-set, you know, you think, actually, I might have drunk too much tonight, and you're only a like half hour into your set list, and uh, that would have been a slog. But by all accounts, he puts on a great show, so whatever whatever he was drinking was working. There was, um, you were talking, uh, talking about Milton Keynes before, I remember Milton Keynes' bar. Mm-hmm. Um there was, um, I saw R.E.M. at Milton Keynes Bowl, but there was another gig I went to there, and there was a metal band. Mm-hmm. Uh, they may have been South American, I'm not saying who it was or whatever, but their tour rider extended to on stage as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had, um, they asked for certain whiskey yeah. uh, that was on the top of their amp, plus something else that was just underneath their amp. <laughs> So when it was the, yeah, so when it was the end of every song, yeah, thank you like that, you know, turn around, they'll go back and look like they were fiddling around. Yeah, and they really. I won't say who it was, but when you're looking at the side, <laughs> I'm sure you can feel that. When yourself. you're looking at the sovereign on the side, you see what's going on. It was, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. And, well, that's uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure you can fill in the gaps there. Uh, but, but with for for Williams, yeah, you see the thing. I mean, the thing is with touring, and you know this. Yeah. The thing with touring is, is that um, again. So, someone said to me, um, they when they learned, they found out that Keith Richards doesn't get up out of bed until five o'clock in the afternoon, right? Mm-hmm. Well, he wouldn't, would he? Yeah. If he's touring, he wouldn't mm-hmm. because... Um, what time is he going to bed? <laughs> exactly, you know, mm-hmm. you know. He's working in the evening, yep. you know, and probably what's happening with him after a gig, he's probably going off and playing somewhere else, yeah. which Prince did, you yep. know, or, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. A lot of, you know, a lot of people do that. Yep. So... Um, but I remember this person, no, no you know, wasn't, uh, you know, uh, connected with the industry, you know, or anything like that. So, do you know, Keith, oh, that old Richards, mm-hmm. he, uh, yeah, he gets up at five o'clock in the afternoon and goes to bed five o'clock the next morning. And I went, yeah. That's pretty conventional so, for like, yeah. So, you know, yeah. you know that's his life, you know. Circuit. Oh, I couldn't do that. So, well, no, you don't because you work nine to five, yeah. you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Different, different world. Yeah. Different world. Yeah. Absolutely. So who we got next up? Oh, uh, Jack White. Ooh. Interestingly, with the infamous No Banana Tour. No Banana Tour. I will yeah. say it clearly. Um, and it actually was. There would be no bananas in the building whatsoever. Mm. Now, was that because before they went on the tour, they went for the insurance and they all had their medicals done and they found out maybe there was a... Uh, a strong supply of potassium in everyone's blood and he was scared of potassium overloading the crew potentially. <laughs> Who knows? Because why, what is it with bananas? Oh, bananas are pretty good. They're very inoffensive. They go over a lot of things. Um, Maybe he's very health conscious and didn't want to... Uh, he may not like them. Or simple as that. Yeah, he may not like them or um, it may have been like the brown M&M's. Yeah. You know, testing the promoter. Yeah. It doesn't really yeah. strike... He doesn't, doesn't sort of really strike you... Uh, you know, sort of being like that. He's very eccentric from what I've seen of him. It was a very interesting character. 
Um, yeah, there's no no bananas. I mean, may, maybe he should get his potassium checked, and maybe while he's at it, his vitamin D, because he's quite a pale chap. Uh, yes, he is. Yeah, he's very eccentric. Love, you know, again, amazing musician. Um, it's just, yeah, no bananas on the tour. Maybe allergic to them. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe allergic to them. Have to get him on. Have to get him on the show and ask him ourselves one day. <laughs> Which reminds me, I'd have Marmite on my uh, my rider. Marmite. You, yeah. You're a massive Marmite fan. Yeah, I am. Yeah. 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 Marmite, but what with toast or with like? Yeah, toast is fine. Toast. Yeah, but very rock and roll. What's what Marmite? That's right. Yeah, it's not really rock and roll. It's the one that we always no. eaten it, and so it goes back. <laughs> yeah, it goes back about a long, long way. Yeah. Um, yeah, Jack White, very interesting character. Yeah. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, Seemingly didn't like bananas for, for whatever reason. There was no bananas. Yeah. So there was no potassium. Um, you know, uh, uh, yeah. Who who knows what that was? Um, so next one, the next one we've got up is mm. Public Enemy. Public Enemy. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Um, interesting. And they probably when we probably when we think about it, they probably, um, along with NWA, um, the greatest rap. I say band because they were. I consider them. I consider DJs bands. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, musicians. Um, probably the two biggest bands mm-hmm. uh, of that genre. Yeah. Um, that there's ever been. Um, a, a lot of people would argue, you know, and sort of say, you know, well, this, you know, Black Eyed Peas, you know, but, uh, sort of bearing on different kinds of influences there. Yeah, in different genres. But ones, hardcore, yeah. both of those bands, and Public Enemy, mm-hmm. interestingly enough. Um, they ban pork, no pork mm-hmm. products. Okay. Um, actually, there's a line from Wayne's World about pork products. I can't remember what it is, but that's in Wayne's World One. That's right. Yeah, Classic yeah. film. Yeah. Um, yes, there is. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, I. That's it. God, don't you smell something about pork products yeah. or something? When they get pulled up by the police, yeah, yeah, yeah that's that kind of. Thing. Yeah, I get it. I get a Campbell. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so. Um, they ban pork and uh, they ban pork and alcohol. Yeah. Um, from all their dressing rooms, and they required that all the food that they wanted, which was basically fast, a lot of it was fast food. Mm-hmm. This is allegedly, but we have seen the rider. Yeah. You know, if it's if it's the real rider, so they would all have stuff ordered from what is KFC now, mm-hmm. um, or pizza, which could have been from numerous companies. However, it had to be kosher. Mm-hmm. So, um, dietary laws, I don't think with, with kosher food, you can mix milk and um, meat. Mm-hmm. So the vegetari- uh, they would have, the pizzas would have been vegetarian because yeah. of the cheese. Yeah. Uh, I, would, I, would, I would think. Yeah. Could imagine. be wrong. I could be wrong. With KFC, with the chicken, that's a whole different thing, you know, yeah. whatever. Um, but that's a really strange. Yeah, can we go make it kosher? I mean, it's a strange request. I, I, yeah, obviously, unless, unless it was for like you know, religious reasons, I don't, you know, as far it'd as be I know. fresh. Yeah, food would be fresh. Yeah, it would be good. Yeah, it would be fresh. You wouldn't get some some grub that's been sat in a under a warm under a warm light for you know twelve no, hours. No, no, exactly. No, it'd be very very. You know, it'd be. Yeah. Um, it would be very fresh. Uh, yep. Be very freshly dead. I think is probably the best way. Yeah. Um, to describe it. Yeah. Um, and that seems um, it was either probably something to do with that, you know, we've made it, um, because I would imagine that um, that fraternity is a very, very small fraternity yeah. globally, mm-hmm. and I, w- I would imagine that uh, the product is very expensive. Mm-hmm. But if the promoter's paying for it and they're not, I would imagine that... Um, I would imagine, yeah, that that may well have existed, you yeah. know, whatever. Yeah. And it probably tasted great, you know, yeah, if, if you're not a vegetarian. Yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah. So, um, you know, the chicken would have done, you know. It, 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 so, yeah, you know, it, it, it could have worked out like that. They, they, so, they had an acquired palate for fresh food, let's say. They were men, great. men of taste. <laughs> they were a great band, though. Yep. They were just a great band. Yeah. Lucy is a bass head. It was, mm-hmm. was was early on for them. I remember that hearing that. Mm-hmm. It was just they were just great. Yeah, revolutionary, absolutely. Um, and you think without them in the nineteen nineties, would you have got 
the whole rat metal. Well, uh, mm -hmm. would you have got Rage Against the Machine? Yep. Um, would you have got uh, from like Limp Bizkit, You know, like kind of crawling into like sort of you know, yeah. the new wave sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah you know, it's definitely a the whole debate huge, there as, as to their knock on. Yeah, huge influence. NWA as well. Yep. Uh, maybe there was maybe a few more. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're, they're the two, you know, obviously Public Enemy, and there's a couple more, yeah, you know, that come to mind or whatever. Mm -hmm. But what a uh, what an unusual that I think I think out of all of them, so you know, the riders we've spoken about so far, that's one of the more unusual ones. But I, I think with the Jack White one, I think we could say that he may have had an allergy, only he knows, yeah. Um, but I can imagine the promoter, you know, you know, when, when uh, the email goes back to the promoter said. No bananas. Yeah. Anywhere. Um, yeah. I wonder if they were allowed to be for sale in the auditoriums. Ooh. I mean, how many, how many, I've not been to many concerts where they've been selling fresh fruit, to be fair. You haven't been to many gigs. Uh, that's changed as well. Yeah. Um, and so, so are soccer stadiums yep. changing. Yeah. Football stadiums. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just like a, a like a meat pie. Yeah. Uh, um, a hot dog, you know, yeah, or gonna... the infamous hot dog, yeah. yeah that's changing, you yeah. Know, so more gourmet, yeah. I went to I went to Wembley to see a friendly match of England once, and they were like, you get go and get a hot dog, oh, with, with onions or without onions. And I thought they were going to put some on. And there was just two sections that had been made off site and brought in one hot dog with onions and one without, and it tasted like some metallic sort of mush, and it was horrible. Oh, I think football has gone down the same the same route as live um, live live events because when you see. Um, festivals mm -hmm. uh, the food stands uh and the not only just the merchandise stands but the um uh the things the services that they provide yeah it's just not um a meat pie a hot dog um and a beer you know yep. or a co coca-cola you mm -hmm. know it it is um um Expensive alcohol. It's just, yeah, I mean, you know, um, Spurs football ground, I think, sells plant based food. Yes, there's a very, yeah, it's very true. Things it's are going changing. Yeah. yeah, you know, Fulham yeah. is another, you know, so yeah, it, it's all changing. It's great. I mean, it's yeah. just really, really great the way that, that that has actually sort of taken off. Yeah. Um, all food at gigs. Wow. Uh, mm. Backstage or not backstage, yeah. there's any difference. You know, food at gigs is just like a, it's to be, uh, a no, no, you know, yeah, it, no. It, it just wasn't there, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it just goes to show you, you know, how that's changed. Yeah, that's you know, really, really changed. Um, the Roundhouse always serve food. I remember they still do mm -hmm. different food. They were probably one of the first people ever, you yeah. know, where it was um, where that was different. I think the Rainbow Theatre used to do that as well. Mm -hmm. But anywhere else, um, it was like head for the bar. Yeah. Um, and then there was the hot dog stands outside, the same as football. Yeah, where they'd have like a box of burgers. Yeah, I'd never eat one, but it'd be like a box of burgers on the floor. You know, yeah, on the floor. <laughs> they used to be in the West End in Central London. Yeah, you know, you only be out, you only be out late at night. You know, so they'd appear at a certain time. Yeah, you know, eleven o'clock at night or twelve o'clock. There they were. Westerners, Westerners hot dogs, and there'd be a guy, a guy this. Frying them like that, you know. Yeah. Brian nylon jacket on. Yeah. You know, Frying. Yeah. It wasn't so long ago. I think I, I think I think it might be the mayor of London, the first mayor of London. I think did something about it. I think. Mm -hmm. like, but in London, I don't know about any other if they still exist in any other cities in the UK. Yeah. But it was, uh, and that was it. You know, that was absolutely it. So. Um, Next one. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, the infamous. Britney Spears, you know, who's in the press obviously quite a lot recently. Um, she was uh, she was rather touchy about her dressing room uh, phone number, and we believe it was a five thousand dollar fine for um, anyone who got the wrong number potentially. Um, so let's unpack that a little bit there. Who, what, when, where, and why was this a thing potentially? Why would she want a phone? Yeah, it's mobile phones. You mm. know, why? Why would you, why, why would you want a phone? And the thing about getting the wrong number and having a, having the fine for it is a uh, bizarre. Unless she was running a competition for fans to phone her. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, a little that's bit. That's a, a little possibility. Side hustle. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's just that's just coming to my head. That's a possibility. But why would you want a phone? 
the last thing you'd want to do really before you go and do a gig is uh you know sort of you know oh hello hello yeah 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 i'll meet you tomorrow you know so, yeah. you know blah 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 sorry I, I, i've just got to go on in front of twenty thousand people speak yeah. to you later bye brb you know yeah, bye yeah 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 bye bye, bye. yeah, yeah in, it's in it's kind of old-fashioned and i don't quite understand you know the fine either for, for for the wrong number um and obviously she was a lady of you know loads of money and at her height of fame was the biggest pop star i'm sure it'll come out now mm. that um her dad is uh, mm. uh, uh, stood down, and I think finally, finally, finally going to stand down or whatever. Yeah, yeah that, that that's a really odd. Um, it's like an Elvis thing, isn't it? You know, it's a really odd, um, odd scenario that. Yep. And um, I was I I was checking up on her, and um, her branding is just. Uh, there was one point about six or seven years ago. Uh, I don't know how true it is. Her perfume, mm -hmm. Britney Spears' perfume, um, was like one of the top four selling perfumes in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, um, um, cologne, you know, yep. whatever. Yeah, it was... It's um, crazy. And her product placement in videos, mm -hmm. she makes more money making music videos probably than a lot of other things. That yeah. Her her organization have done. Yeah. Where there's so much product, it's like a James Bond movie. There's yeah. so much Everywhere product placement you know, yeah. going on. Yeah. So with that telephone, I would I my uh my own opinion, um she must have been they must have been running a competition. Mm -hmm. Speak to Brittany. Speak to Brittany. And you'll be given a, a number. Yeah. And if it's the wrong number given out or whatever it is, mm -hmm. then she'd do her nut. Yeah. Um because we now also in live events, we now live in a world now where uh, there's charge cards and, and credit cards. When you you know if you buy your ticket, mm -hmm. um, you have this kind of um, what is it VIP treatment? Mm -hmm. You know, where if you pay yep. four hundred quid for a ticket instead of one hundred and fifty, the exclusive you bar can meet, and all that, yeah. meet, meet your idol. Yeah, you know, and stand in what used to be the old press enclosure or mm -hmm. whatever. There's that. So that may be something to do with it, where there yeah. may have been a competition of, say, four or 500 people every night, where they could have... Um, yeah, the marketing stuff's coming Yeah, out there. well, yeah. this is a whole new, like, yeah, yeah. rabbit hole. That could on. that could well have been something to do with that. It's very yeah. possible. That's crazy, though. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, fair enough, she had the reputation of being a diva. She was probably the biggest pop icon at the time for a very long period as well. Um, uh, so, yeah. Incredible thing about her early career. She started off working with Justin Timberlake and Christine Aguilera. Yeah, three of them. Yeah, on the as Disney kids. Oh, Disney, well, Disney kids were like, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. the, all, 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 all three of them have now gone on to take over the world to an extent with you know the music. You know, yeah, um, yeah, and done very well for themselves. Yeah, Christine Aguilera's um, um, rider would be interesting. Yeah, we can find it, folks. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll you, find it. You, yeah, yeah, we'll find it. So this is the last one. Uh, through a lot of searching, both yep. of us, we thought that this was the uh, this was oh. one that what we should use last next level sort of yeah. stuff. This and it is. is on another level. Yeah, um, I think it basically sums up sex, drugs, and rock and roll, yep. and everything debauchery, everything. It yep. just throws everything on top. Mm -hmm. And we have the one that we chose really for the main one or the last one was Iggy Pop and the Stooges. Mm -hmm. It couldn't just, be anyone else. Couldn't it just has else. to be. Yeah. Um, Iggy Pop now, when we look at Iggy Pop now, pretty much sort of still really good. I mean, for his age, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Pretty much played down sort of live. Um, when you think that when he was with the Stooges, there was the whole stuff where, um, I can't remember who quoted it, that he used to put... Um, take his shirt and jeans off and cover himself in peanut butter and jump, slam dive into the crowd, basically. They have so many questions. Yeah, there's so many questions on that. You know, they call the peanut butter off, you know, and the people like, are going nuts at the front. Firstly, how crunchy. many jars of peanut butter does it take to cover Iggy Pop from no head idea. to toe, firstly? Was it smooth or crunchy? And also, the, the, poor, the poor person now, whose job it was to, to peanut butter up... Uh, you know, to butter up Iggy Pop. Imagine like you're really excited. Done that himself. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, think? Yeah, yeah you sure there's not some poor person now who's got like PTSD from having a peanut butter sandwich because they can't have to cover Iggy in peanut butter. Um, 
But if you're gonna, still going to see him even now, he's yep. still great live. Yep. He's still great live now. You know? Yeah, he's a madman. And he puts oh, on the show. Lord, you know, I'm the chairman of the board. You know, whatever. You know. Yeah. Just so um, in your face. Yeah. Um, it's, his real, it's David Ostenberger, isn't it? That's his real, that, that's his real name. Not quite as exciting as Iggy Pop. No, it's <laughs> not. But his whole career story, when you think, you know, you mm-hmm. think of Iggy Pop, before we get onto this tour rider, we're saving this, we're, we're keeping you back yeah. on this one. Um, the stuff he did with Bowie, you know. Yeah. Um, even the songs that he gave to Bowie, oh, Bowie covered or you know, China Girl, you know, yeah, really good songwriter. Yeah, absolutely. When you think how crazy, yeah, uh, absolutely. Some of the stuff that, um, but he came up with that era. Um, so Iggy Pop and the Stooges, the height of their era when he, uh, when they would have been involved with Bowie, would have been the early seventies. That's from the late sixties. Yeah, this is from the early seventies, and during that period, you had people like Alice Cooper and his band. Mm-hmm. Um, who were huge on alcohol. You had, um, though, if you've ever read, um, there's a Led Zeppelin book. Um, is it In Through the Outdoor? I can't remember what it's called. Mm-hmm. There's the infamous story in there about the, the Red Snapper yep. uh, fish. Mm-hmm. You know, there's all these kind of yeah. things that they go going. So it's all from that era. Yeah. So. Well, I just, I thought I just have a question. Just ping that part. <laughs> Can you, definitely want to sign. That's really throwing me off a little bit because who cover yourself in peanut, peanut butter and also imagine well, I'm sure if One Direction would have done it the same thing with the same reaction crazy yeah. man but yeah. also imagine you're going to Iggy Pop okay and, you, and you've, got, you've got a nut allergy and you think you're safe at a concert yeah they, yeah, but they'd they know about those kind of I things I know, you know but you, then, yeah. you, you would have known you might have been saying they're thinking is it is yeah, getting a bit heavy now and then you look up and Iggy Pop is in the air like a salted and sticky albatross that's emerged from a from a, from, a, from an oil spill, <laughs> and you're trying to run for your life now, you're trying to push past everybody. You're not getting nowhere. It's a bit of a metaphor for your teenage years, really. You're trying to push through the crowds for your life. Iggy Pop's kind of getting lower and lower. If we, I tell you what, if we can, if we if we can find some clear pictures, we got yeah, there's got to be we'll, some footage we'll, somewhere. We'll, we'll put it up or, or some footage of it. Yeah, we'll direct you to uh, you know you know wherever it is where you can look at it. Yeah. Um. So. Iggy Pop's tour rider. Mm-hmm. Right? It's just, it's just. It, I have to put on glasses to read, yep. read this because I can't remember all of it because it is just so well, there's ridiculous. A few right? on gold, yeah. So yes, it was the early seventies. Okay, um, and um, what they demanded him and his band on the rider, and this is just a small part of the rider. Okay, um, were they asked for um, seven very small people like the Snow White movie, right? You wouldn't read that story to kids, poor bed. Iggy Pop and, 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 and the seven. No. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you know. So it would, it would be very much, uh, when we talk about Spinal Tap, um, I have a Spinal Tap story um, from Live Earth, which uh, we, both George and I will discuss. Yeah. Um, which has, has never really sort of been online or never been spoken about. But um, mm-hmm. we'll mention that. It's something quite similar to this. Um, so they de- they demanded that. And they also demanded um, a brand of cigarettes that Iggy didn't like okay. so he could throw them in the bin. <laughs> that's rock and roll. Yeah, that's rock and roll. Then, you know, you know, probably all the drink that, that they all wanted or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then... They also demanded every night a Bob Hope impersonator. Bob Hope was a British comedian that emigrated to America um, before uh, the 1940s, I think, like the mm-hmm. 1930s. And he is probably still the most famous ever stand-up comedian um, that's ever been produced in America. Mm-hmm. Right? So they wanted a Bob Hope impersonator just standing there in a dressing room <laughs> with seven sort of uh, little people walking around. Um, like, yeah, with with just very surreal, complete mayhem. Like a Tim Burton yeah. film, yeah, absolutely yeah. surreal. Just May- rock and roll. I don't even think Spinal Tap could have been no. that. You know, Iggy Pop's covered in peanut butter. There's seven little people. We've got we've got Bob Hope in the corner. Yeah, it's just, it's just you know you couldn't make it up really. You couldn't it's make it up. Just just absolutely nuts. You know. Yeah. And um, but what would be interesting now is what would his tour rider be now? Now now that he's settled down a little bit. Well, I think well, he's way, way, way in his seventies now. Yeah, 
He, he must be in his 70s. I know Jagger's, what, 70, yeah. 8, 79? Yeah. Could be wrong, I don't know. Yeah. So Iggy Pop must be somewhere sort of early 70s. Or, I wonder what... Uh, wonder what it'd be on there now, yeah. Like, probably like deep heat pads, maybe, like ice, probably. So the rest is joints. Possibly. Were there's originals? Were there's originals, yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Some crocheting kit point, that's quite trendy now. They asked for water and a towel. Yeah, some, it, some ice packs, maybe. Yeah, it's possible. Um, so um, we'll find out. We'll definitely find out about that, unless you may find out about it or whatever. So um, we come to the end of um, our second podcast. Um, mm -hmm. Part two. Yeah, part two. Mm -hmm. This is part two of the live events or live music or, you know, mm -hmm. and um, we've had a great time doing it. Um, all the um, social media stuff, all the stuff you want to log on, like Twitch and stuff, we will put on for you um, to go forward. And the website is www realityjukebox.com um, thanks again for watching and listening and we shall see you for our fourth episode thank you thank you see you bye